Welcome back to the next episode, The Dog on Truth About Rescue. We have Jen Dalski back in the house to uh, catch up on everything that's been happening within Jen when was the last time you were on? A month ago, know. two months ago. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, when it, it comes to time and rescue, I sometimes don't even know what day it is because my routine is the same. I wake up every morning at four, I take care of the dogs, I catch up on always and forever stuff, and then I do my my day job. And it doesn't matter if it's Monday through Sunday, it's kind of the same thing. It just depends on the event. So I have no idea the last time we talked, <laughs> uh, but I, I do. Um, the last time I was on was with our Wichita crew talking about the Wichita um, mm. truly tragedy that's going on there. So maybe we, maybe we start it was there. August. Yeah. I know there's a lot of highs and lows. I feel like sometimes it's extremes highs and lows. Sometimes it's that little kitty roller coaster highs and lows. But the last month has been a bit of a whirlwind for always and forever. A lot of transparency through our groups and social media. But hearing it from you, I think, always has a little bit more background context to it. So, But let's start with Wichita. Well, I, I wish I had an update that was positive. The When we spoke the last time, we had thought that we had hope with the city manager and city council saying that they were going to hire a rescue coordinator so that rescues could pull directly from Wichita Animal Shelter. And if if this isn't making sense, you guys, I don't want to go back on a previous episode. So please, please listen to our Wichita episode that explains the structure of this to where we're blocked out from pulling and saving lives yeah. in Wichita Animal Shelter. So we won't go into the weeds of that. But unfortunately, you guys, the very sad update is nothing has changed. And we are at now almost 1,600 lives that have been euthanized since January 1st at Wichita Animal Shelter. So the one positive update I have, and I, I'm a big believer, and no matter what the situation is, there is literally always hope. If there wasn't hope, none of us would have motivation to even get out of bed or want to wake up in the morning. And I've I've been in the darkness before where I didn't think that there was light. And I, I can always, there's lessons and blessings in everything. And I think God put me in this per- position and in this leadership role to know that as long as you have the right perspective, where there is hope, there is life. And where there's life, you're going to find a way. So on October 18th, we will be walking to City Hall in Wichita with other rescues and with other advocacy groups. And we will be placing 1,600 collars on the steps of City Hall's doors. And it, we will take a moment of silence and we will say a prayer. And each and every one of those collars will be representative of the lives that were lost in Wichita by rescues being blocked out. So That's the update that I have on Wichita. If you're local, please come. If you're not local, we actually have people flying in. That's how much people believe in this movement for change. And change starts within. It's not that we're asking the city to change. We're asking to let us be that change. And that's so incredibly important because it's one thing to scream and shout, you're horrible, do something. And it's another to say, we know that this is an impossibly hard situation. Let us help. And that's the difference. That's why we can't stop speaking up. And the second we are silent, when there is mistreatment, where there is inhumane suffering, and we can talk about Mikhail too, you guys, I don't even think we talked about Mikhail. Mm -mm. Uh, The second we stop talking about it, then we condone it. And that's why we can't be silent because these animals don't have a voice. And talking about Mikhail, for those that aren't familiar Mikhail was brought into Wichita Animal Shelter on a Friday at 417. There's an intake picture of him. Now, the Kansas Humane Society of Wichita are contracted with the city of Wichita to oversee the veterinarian services within Wichita Animal Shelter. So their vet is supposed to look at the animals that come in and decide if it should be a mercy euthanasia or if they should reach out to other rescues or if it should go to the emergency vet. Now, this vet looked at Mikhail and left him there for three days. They put him up. Mikhail is a Rottweiler mix. Let's put this into context. A healthy Mikhail should be about 90 pounds. He was brought into Wichita shelter, literally bones, bones. I don't even know how he was standing in the intake photo, but the photo that we have of him looks like a skeleton, lifeless, Mm -hmm. laying in his feces with a food bowl, completely full 
and another one um, upside down in his kennel spread everywhere as he's laying in his feces, basically lifeless. And the vet at Kansas Humane Society left him at Wichita mm. Animal Center for three days to suffer. Now, what we found and what you usually find when a dog is that emaciated and it's not eating, you always have to worry about an obstruction. So a very simple x-ray could have notified the vet that this dog is dying, literally dying. He had what we found when we found out about him. And again, we don't, we're don't. we behind the scenes. We're pulling through other shelters. If you don't understand this relationship, please watch the or listen to the previous episode. But we found out about Mikhail on a Sunday night, and we immediately had another rescue pull him on Monday and transfer him into our care. Now, it was a very, very long debate of internally, what is the right thing to do for him? Because he was severely suffering. And here's the thing, too. Mikhail's only about two years old. But in the condition that he was in, there, there was no question. Even if we went forward with the surgery, he would be suffering. And so we kind of had, it was really interesting. We have a phenomenal med team. And one of the things that I love about Always and Forever is that we do advocate having an opinion, having an opinion that might be different from somebody else's opinion. So it was, it was an arc. It was a true I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say argument, but it was a debate over what's the right thing for Mikhail to do. Do we end his suffering or do we pursue an extremely invasive surgery to where from the top of his chest all the way down, he would be cut open and it would be exploratory to try to get this basically it was a trash bag full of trash outside of his stomach to save his life. Now you might think, well, why, why wouldn't you just take that chance and try to save him? Well, number one, we were probably looking at close to 20 to $30,000 in medical costs. Okay. For any other rescue, it would have been like, boom, <laughs> no, because we can use that money to save hundreds of other animals. But when it comes to medical decisions and monetary issues, we actually never once have taken that into consideration. Why? Because we have the most amazing followers and not because we have excess funds. We actually are always struggling with funds, but we have an unparalleled faith that people will believe these lives matter and that they will come together and help us with each and every one. So we threw out the medical monetary part of it and said, okay, let's look and see, is he suffering? And would he, could he even survive the surgery? And so we kind of, I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. I think it was at least six to eight hours of back and forth. Well, the doctor says this, the doctor says that. And ultimately we got to the point where we literally split 50, 50 down the middle where, it, and then it was like, okay, well, what do we do? We've never been in a situation where our med team is split because usually you can say, okay, just, you know, your gut kind of leads you in one direction. And I'm not going to lie. I might've filibustered a little bit and refused to get off the phone because he was so young. And my whole thought was if he dies on the table, then he dies trying. He dies with someone believing he was worth trying. Now, granted, I knew here's another thing too. That meant like a four hour trip to the vet from Wichita out here because we had to use a board sort of soft tissue surgeon. We had to use the best and we had to use the right facility that could keep them in their care 24 seven, because that is how, how sick he was. And we knew it couldn't just be a local emergency vet. There, like there were all these external factors that had to line up for this dog just to have the chance to survive. And Dr. Millard at um, Phoenix Veterinarian Services, one of the best, Julie called her and she said, you know, what do you think? You know, what are, what are his chances? And, and the chances were just so low, they couldn't even give chances. But I remember her saying, I want to win. And like, how do you not want to go all in and win on a life that literally someone walked by that dog suffering for three days, laying in his feces with his bowl of food dripping over his head, not even moving. And they left him there to suffer. So it was the whole thing of this dog has suffered so much. And just a little bit of me knew we had to try. And every what, what I love the most about our conflicts is that they're literally led with love. And it's always about what's the best interest of the animal. So no one was fighting with each other. They're fighting for the love of this dog. 
And so even though it was tense and we got stuck and we didn't know what to do, at one point, Judy's like, well, someone has to make a decision. <laughs> and I'm like, fine, we're going to save them. We're going all in. And or Julie said, the only way we will do that is with Dr. Millard. And she was 100% right. Now, guys, if we hadn't done that debate, if we hadn't talked, if we hadn't, everything had to align to where this surgeon in this facility and then the drive out here, everything had to align for him to just have the chance to survive. And so we left at... Beth and I left at four in the morning. Greta went and picked him up at three in the morning. We met halfway. And I, I cannot tell you, it was so weird how three hours in the car went by in a blink. Because when you have hope, when you have like, just even if it's just a glimmer of hope in your heart, it's like time stops and you're like, okay, God, you know, I'm trusting you. You got this. You are, God is literally the only one that could ever have made any of this possible. And we thought, okay, all right, so we picked up Mikhail, but until you physically see and feel and pick up a dog, I can't describe it. It was like the smell of death. And when you held him and when we put him in the car, uh, the tears just kept pouring down my face and Beth's face. And we just put classical music on. And again, time just stopped. We drove. It was, you know, perfect, perfect weather. Thank God, no rain or anything. But you just go into like a silent prayer of calmness and say, okay, this this dog looks dead. And that, that was the same thing Dr. Millard said. I said, well, what did you think when you first saw him? I just said, you brought me a dead dog. And honest to God, with her, with her staff at at Acute Vet, like the amount of love that their staff put into Mikhail's surgery and recovery, and he almost died on the table too. Like it's just, it's miracle after miracle after miracle. And it's Mikhail in such a horrid, horrid situation where someone else just looked at him and said, he's a piece of garbage and left him there to suffer. The whole world rallied to help us fundraise, to help us believe that this one soul deserved a chance for someone to at least try. And so that's that's what I, I think I started. I, I can't remember if we were offline or not, but there are there really are lessons and blessings in everything. And in this case, someone else's trash has been a treasure to so many people who rallied to believe. Look at the power of prayer and look what hope can do. And it's such a beautiful example because I'll kind of transition to what's going on with Always and Forever. We had we had four people part with before, Always and Wait, Forever. before you transition, can you okay. give a, the most recent update on him and how oh people my can gosh. follow the journey? Because that's a big okay. part of, okay. obviously, well, okay. we're not nearly done. But no, before we transition topics. Okay. Okay, well, we're not going to transition. Guys, we have, go to our website, alwaysandforever.org, F-U-R-E-V-E-R. We have a whole page set up to Mikhail and his journey. If you scroll down, it's the very original post. Look at how he looked today. This dog, oh my God, he, when we go live with him, he lights up your soul. He is, he wags his tail. He leans into you. Look at that. You cannot help but madly fall in love with the journey of him and the relationship he built with Julie. And he's great with dogs. He's chasing her cat. He got a little feisty and pulled out his feeding tube yesterday. So he's got, he's got so much life and joy in him. And it's just, it's just the most beautiful thing of never giving up. And sometimes we're wrong on this. Sometimes I'm wrong. And it's so crazy how the very next day after we decide to save Mikhail, totes a dog that was left in um, Oklahoma City Shelter completely neglected and abused, maybe like 14 or 15 blind and just, and paralyzed. We ended up finding him. We pulled him, we got him to the vet and we knew we couldn't save him, that there was nothing we could do to give him a life where he would live with dignity and and feel love. So what we did was the most amazing foster in Oklahoma City, took him for one night, got him a cheeseburger. He slept in her son's bed. And then the very next day we said goodbye where he was embraced with love. So it's it's taking the wins with understanding, you know, the circumstances, the facts, and, and truly it is, you know, goes back to our mission statement, hoping that every soul is treated with kindness, dignity, respect, and most importantly, their life has been touched by love. And that's even if only for a moment. And if where we got into such the debate was, 
the car ride, the night waiting, because it couldn't be that day. She couldn't do the surgery that day. We hadn't decided. So there was a period where Mikhail was literally dying while he was in our care, not at the shelter being ignored. But once we knew what was going on, we knew he was dying and we were prolonging his suffering, but we were doing that with the end goal to give him hope, to give him life. And damn, that dog is so good and he's so loved and he's so happy. So please go to our website and watch his journey because I guarantee you, your heart will just explode. And that's, that's what, that's why we keep going when things are so hard and so crazy. You can transition now. <laughs> no, I can't. I don't even remember how I was going to transition before. So, um, but I guess the one thing I'll say is rescue is not easy. Um, nobody ever said it is. Nothing in life is ever easy. The easy stuff, in my opinion, isn't worth it. And the easy stuff is what everybody does that's comfortable. If you want to grow, if you want to change, if you want to challenge the way shelters are run, you're going to find friction and you're going to find resistance. And you you kind of started this off with saying we're transparent. We will always be transparent. Why? Because when we started this, how, is, how do I say this? <laughs> I God, God has such a funny way of teaching you how you go and and you can look back and and see, man, I had a long way to go to to get to where I am. And boy, do I have a longer way to go to be the, to be the person I want to be, to be, to lead this rescue to what it should be and create the legacy and foundation of the future. And I remember starting this and worrying about what people thought and worrying about hurting people's feelings or the judgment that would come with making certain decisions. Now, I'm a big believer that when you do everything with love and with the right intentions, even when you screw up, that's where forgiveness is. That's where you give each other the grace to say, hey, no matter what, I am literally always going to be human. That's the one thing I can't change. But what I can control is when I make a mistake and I recognize and I say, hey, we've got, I've got an opportunity to be better and to do better. It's such a good way to take a step back and say, okay, what did I do wrong? What did we do wrong? And what can we put in place to do get, to do better? And so we're a rescue that when things happen that other people might judge or be like, hey, what's going on with you? We share it. So at one point, I think two weeks ago, we had four very good people choose to part ways with always and forever. And I, what do you do with that? Because, whoa, that looks so bad. People left, right? They all left at the same time. And, you know, if you kind of take a step back and you think about it, well, people leave jobs every day, right? And we are trying to make this more like a corporation because that's the way it should be run because it is also donors money. There has to be accountability. There has to be professionalism. It can't just be solely run off of emotions. Now it was at the beginning and many, many of my mistakes were made because sometimes I held on to the wrong people, the good wrong people for the wrong reasons for longer than I should. Um, and I, I said this before, if everyone that has been drawn to always and forever has always been wonderful. And they were drawn to us for a reason and they brought so much to us. So you, you will never hear me say anything um, about someone who has chosen or, or otherwise been asked to leave always and forever because they've made us who we are today, mistakes or otherwise, as I have too. So kind of like what I said, there's lessons and blessings in everything. And what do you do when something like that happens? Well, I jump on a Facebook live and I share the truth. I share what's going on. I share areas where we need to grow. And I hope that our followers and our supporters give me the grace that um, to grow into the leader that I know I want to be and that I know this organization needs. And that's, that's one of the lessons I think I'm going to keep repeating in different ways because that's what life is. It's growth, it's trial, it's error, it's change. It's striving to make today better than it was yesterday to build a better tomorrow. It's always looking towards what can I do more to make this rescue better? And that goes internally. So I share that with our staff. I share that with our volunteers too. Anybody who says they, they can't change the world doesn't understand that change starts within you. And it's all about perspective because how you see the world is a reflection of your world around you. And that's really where it goes back to life can fall apart around me, but I remember what it was like to live in the darkness and to truly believe like there was no hope of tomorrow. And I want to give you, I want to give you credit, Jen, um, on your vulnerability, 
and transparency Mm -hmm. coming from someone who doesn't even cry in front of like my own closest friends to watch (laughs) your live discussing it and truly how hurt you were, but then being able to share that with the world because it is such a relatable feeling that I think not a lot of people see outside of TV shows or like big movies and everything, but to truly see somebody be as vulnerable as you are and admit faults. I just wanted to give you credit for that because that takes a lot. You know, it's funny because... um, You were brave. You were very brave. (laughs) You know, you don't feel brave when you do that, but I did start that live because I do lives as, as often as I can, because I think it's important for people to know who they're giving their money to. And, and it's your hard earned money that you're donating to. So if you don't know the leaders of a nonprofit, then don't give your money to them, because it really does come down to who your executive leaders are, because everything starts at the top. And you got to be able to uphold those values. And in and in, in that's your rock. That's your foundation. And, and I started that live by saying I, I, I didn't plan it. I just sent a note to the board. I said, I I have to go live and I have to share. And the one thing I said to myself in my head, I'm like, don't cry. And that that went out the window. I started talking because here's the thing. I love and care for every single person that has come into always and forever and every single animal. And no matter who leaves, no matter what the circumstances are, I will still always deeply love them and wish only good things for them. And when good people leave, no matter what the circumstances are, it's hard when they're your friends. And it's hard, especially when you know that you might have been the cause for their pain. And that's where my tears came. If I caused pain internally to people, and if I caused pain externally to people, and that doesn't justify anything or and it's not an excuse but that's the reason for the pain behind any exit because that's what life is it's it's hellos it's goodbyes it's moving forward in circumstances that you can't change and doing the very best you can and the circumstances you're dealt with and that's that's where we are so at one point we had literally no adoption and foster coordinators so what what did we do i jumped in <laughs> i jumped in and said i am you the- stepped in i got your i got your t- email i got your messages I'm like, yeah. okay. um and then this is my new contact, contact point <laughs> oh my gosh and then i'm like you know i'm, I'm gonna do things a little different because it's always about learning and i'm like well we've screwed up every other way so let's try it this way and i'm like and so when i did my very first application call you know with people that were interested in adopting I did a Zoom. I'm like, let's do Zooms. Let's get them to know me, get them to know, I can get to know them. And then I can show the dogs. And I was like a bumbling mess too. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, hey, note to self, don't say you're the founder when you're talking to these people because then the expectations are up here. I'm like, let's lower it. So I started the next one. I'm like, this is my second call. I'm really bad at these. Thank you for bearing with me. And then it got better because you're just talking with friends. And, and I, I say this all the time, good attracts good. And these are, these are great adopters and great fosters and to the amazing amount of love and support that people have given not only me but our rescue when it comes to growth and change I can't thank everyone enough and if you want to watch the live it's on our Facebook volunteers page you're welcome to watch it Uh, but it really is just me sharing what's going on in my heart and that's kind of what I do every day on on lives on Facebook because I think it's important to know Who's leading your organization? Who's leading the rescue that you are giving your hard-earned money to? And I I am not a paid employee, but I always want to be clear about that. But I shared this earlier, and I think this is this is a fun note. And you kind of talked about that. You know, there's there's highs and lows with everything, and you've got to be able to ride the waves of rescue. And when this happened, and it was like a low, 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 <laughs> because thinking about hurting people and your friends, and three days later. I had personally paid, I bought an RV two years ago and I bought the story behind buying the RV was I had lost my girl Libby who had been my heart for 14 years and um, I couldn't stand to be home without her. So I I wanted to run away, but I can't run away because I live here and I run the rescue. So I bought an RV with my own personal money and I would run away with Josie and I would come back home. We would go to the park and I, I don't know, out of nowhere, I just thought, you know what, maybe I should wrap the RV and put always and forever and all my dogs all over it. So I found a company, Sign Co. in Merriam. And three days after this happened, the RV was done. And I shared on a Facebook Live the pictures of it and the reveal. And it's just amazing how God picks your spirits up because I surrounded myself in the RV with 
every single animal that had been in my home and a few others that just only brought me love. And, and, and the hardest part of the RV, let me tell you this, is that I kept going back to the design and wanting more dogs on there because how do you choose between 5,000 dogs and cats that you love? And the cats are on there too, but God picks you up and people pick so how, you up. Wait, and, how did you choose? Uh, well, I selfishly chose all of my own. <laughs> As you should. Honestly, it was such a good way as like a memorial for them that they're yeah. always traveling. Like we know that they're always traveling with you the three feet apart. Yeah. But like for that representation of you always walking in another RV and seeing their faces, like it was so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Check it out if you haven't seen the photos. <laughs> if you haven't seen it and it's even better in person. So to anybody that sees me on the street, I, I drive it to the gym every day because I don't go anywhere. The only thing, the only place I go to is the gym. So the gym, I, it's so funny because sometimes I have people circling the RV and knock on the door and they just want to they think I have dogs in there sometimes I do usually I'm just at the gym but just to touch on a point I'm not sure if everybody knows that I have shared many many times I do I had a very good friend when I was struggling years ago after I had a personal loss that said you know Jen heaven is just a different dimension three feet away where everyone you love is literally walking beside you and I love that you said that about the RV because I walk up to the RV and I actually can feel like a presence in my heart I just remember their love and as long as you any time that you think of them or a thought pops in your head, anything like that, they're there. Like we are surrounded by so much love and God is working for us. The universe is working for us, whatever you want to believe in that. But your heart has to be open to understand that we are not in this journey alone. And no matter how dark time, dark and unpredictable and crazy life may seem, God never leaves us and we're going to find our way. I can't think of anything else. There's, oh, okay, hey, okay, okay. I have so, two things. Which I way do, do you want to go? I, oh, okay. I do. I don't know. I'll let you guys first go. off, Sheila doesn't like to introduce me. So I feel like I don't <laughs> Oh, that's so hurtful. That's, that's not fine. fair. No, oh, it, is her, it is her fault. I'm going to support you. That is, but it's because <laughs> Jen... I just no, instantly this starts. This is not the first or second, third time. Sheila, Very you've true. done that multiple times. Very and true. So I, guess, like, I guess the fix you, is... You end it, and then I hop so in I, you the know, last okay. part. We can correct I this. Think, the next episode, no, you get to start it, and not introduce me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my apologies to another I'll, good. I'll admit my fault I'm so sorry Sai she's learning and growing too Sai but slowly give me on. some grace <laughs> transitioning into another good subject TK's house oh my gosh that's such great news okay so we finally we are almost done with construction with TK's tiny home it's right next to our little red barn it's under 200 square feet but here's the coolest part it's a little duplex so copper his best friend's gonna have one side he's gonna have the other now before everybody worries it's got AC it's got electricity it's gonna have two ceiling fans um the AC and the heat are actually gonna be hooked up to my phone so anytime if it were to go off I would get a notification so it's it's so cool it, I I just he's such another one where this was a dog everybody gave up on and copper too and it's just believing that you go to the ends of the earth for the people that you love why wouldn't you do that for the animals same thing with Maddox he was struggling in the barn and I took him into my home and I knew he's a great dog in my home he's perfect with me he's great with all my dogs I have no idea how to introduce him to other people. So we reached out to a trainer. He's terrible and it's 100% fear-based and recognizing that that's fear aggression versus true aggression. And so many people get, you know, you can get lost in it. This dog is aggressive. And, you know, we take, we take the position that we look for a reason to save a dog where many, many rescues and shelters look for a reason or an excuse to put a dog for, to sleep. Because again, that's, that's $6,000 to send him away for training for six weeks in home, in a trainer to help alter his behavior. And he will come back to me after that. But TK's tiny home, it's going to be awesome. It'll be done in a couple of weeks. Please look at that. And that's to the, all the followers who donated every Tuesday to TK's Tiny Home Tuesday. And people were giving $10, $1,000 over the course of the year. So we raised it all. And then there's going to be a huge new yard for the sweet dogs. 
And it's just, guys, there's really, really good things ahead. Um, and that's is there gonna be is there gonna be a ribbon cutting event for that? We need to. We're gonna have a housewarming party and we'll we'll have a wish list out there so you can send gifts to them. But on on, on that note, um, here's another incredible blessing. Our construction at the Osawatomi shelter starts next week. So finally. Our staff is going to have a bathroom. There'll be a meet and greet room. There'll be a cat room. There'll be four more kennels there. There'll be huge play yards for the dogs. We're still raising funds for that. Um, we have to raise about $400,000. We've raised about 100000 I know anything is possible as long as we never stop. So if you have it in your heart, if you believe what we do is good, please consider a donation to our Oz shelter for five and a half years. Our incredible staff has used a porta potty in 110 degree weather with snakes in there, with frogs in in there in negative 17 degrees with frozen seats and frozen like it's just unbelievable their extreme dedication and never once did they ever complain and that is just amazing to me never once because they knew that was the only way to save lives so um i just have to i, I think all of our staff is amazing in every capacity so okay since you spoke about the oz what's the latest on kcmo east yeah, so KCMO East, we need to raise about $4 million to renovate the building there. So if you have $4 million and you want that whole building named after you, you got it. <laughs> we will name the building after you. We will name the players after you. Everything can be named David Smith or whoever, whatever your name is. We will honor you and name every single dog that comes in or cat after you as well. We can have David Smith the first, David Smith the second. Um, but we are waiting to get our pre-construction contract with our contractors so that we can go through all that and kick off our camp capital campaign. So it is, you know, it's one day at a time and it's, and it's, it's wonderful to dream because that's the opportunity to really, truly change how shelters are run. Now there is a space in the building to where it is heated and cooled that we currently have a tenant in and we are hoping to move into there in February next year with our dogs. So Obviously, it doesn't have to be renovated by then in that space, but that's, we keep moving forward. And, and in all honesty, it's God's timing, not ours. But we, it's one thing to say you have faith, but it's another to, to put faith into action. So it's not just sitting around. There has to be work. There has to be belief. And there has to be consistent, constant movement for change. And that's, that's what we're built on every single day. I wake up and take care of these dogs at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. And every day our staff comes in and they love every animal with all their hearts, the cat team, the dog team. It's just amazing. The commitment level, our intake team, our med team, our board, the amount of hours our board spends on so many issues you wouldn't even believe. They are so wonderful. You got to have a board episode without me just to hear what they think because I just do random calls. I'm like, I got an idea. And then I'd be at the gym walking and on a treadmill and they all pick up and sometimes it's genius ideas and sometimes they're quite terrible but they do talk me off the ledge and they're they're amazing and their faith is incredible i i love every single one of their hearts on there um i could not i could not be surrounded with any better people and that's why everything i have and everything i am i will always give to always and forever because that's how much i believe in what we do and, and the why behind it. well going back i always feel I, sometimes i do not trash it transition well because everything you just said was so amazing and beautiful but I also don't know how to follow it so I'm just like okay, okay. moving on moving, <laughs> moving on. on going back awkwardly moving on awkwardly moving on but to a good point are we having a golf team for the golf tournament this year oh. um speaking of fundraising opportunities are there yes. still spots open Is there are still pod? spots open I think it's at it's, I think it's October 11th. I am a I'm it a is. very good first shot golfer, and then everything else I get bored and suck. Um, is it a so, scrabble? Yeah, um, it's best ball. Is, is okay, that yeah, yeah. So scrabble, um, yeah. scramble, scrabble. scramble. I don't know. We're, none of us yeah. are golfers, but I think we need a podcast team. Oh my gosh, we do. We need one more. I'll okay. see if Krishna is available. That would he be actually kind of golfs. All right. I don't rely on my putting. I stink at putting, and then I get bored. I can putt. I, I can hit it really far like one time straight and then they go left and right. But I, I what is your golfing strength? <laughs> Scott, she's shaking her head. No, <laughs> I feel like you can hit it really far. Si. Mm -mm. We can go to top golf. Yeah. First. I okay. have a okay. reservation. I need to practice. Yeah, On we'll that go. note, I did go to Fowlings and that was a lot of fun. I wish you guys would have gone. Do. You were, I know. Oh, we watched the game. You were at the Chiefs game. So, but that's okay. 
We'll do it okay. another night. Well, before this goes over an hour, Sai, now that you call me out on this, but it's your part. <laughs> No, I was thinking going over over the years of our podcast, um, the doggone truth about rescues. We're into like the 30, 34, 35 episode. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if our listeners have been following us, like how much we grow, right? Mm-hmm. Always and forever. I just love it. It makes my heart smile. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. But no, I had the most re- relatable when I was driving actually to your house or leaving your house this morning. And one of the radio stations had somebody from a podcast episode on one of like the mystery murders. And she was saying how she's like 172 episodes out because she has a hard time staying consistent. But if you're like just finding out about them, it's like mama, mama murder mystery. I don't know. We have enough of them. Like, even though I'm not consistent, just go back and pick an episode. But then she said, but I recommend not going back to our like original, original (laughs) ones. (laughs) Because the sound quality is not the best and we've learned a lot. And I have never related to something more on the radio. And I was like, yes, yes. Um, so, so, but look at us. I, we're at Zoom now. I this know. is so convenient because it looks like Sheila's cooking dinner while we're Zooming. And I'm at like football practice and Jen is chilling. So this is very convenient. How we've grown. Yeah. It's just, I see a lot of always and forever in the future especially with Jin's RV running around the U.S. Can't <laughs> wait. But it's um, okay. Jin. I had this I had a similar moment too where I don't remember what it was, but I went back and I listened to our very first podcast. And I thought, oh, okay, the sound quality is not great. But you know what I loved from day one? Every one of us was real. Like it was just us talking. And that's that's what's so important is that people know we are who we are on and off camera or on and off microphone. And even if the sound quality sucks, the things that we were talking about, you guys, those are values that have consistently mm-hmm. upheld into in the six and a half years that we've been open. Change otherwise is important, but the foundation of what you're built on when you're built on love, man, I don't know anything stronger. I don't know anything stronger. I agree. Jen? Yeah. We need a cover dog. Ooh, okay. Have we ever had Luna as a cover dog? I don't know if we had Luna, but in my head, I'm like, this is the episode where we finally brought up. Uh, so how do we not use? <laughs> not Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail. Sorry, Mikhail. <laughs> so Mikhail has two people that are interested in him and okay. they are going to visit him. And Mikhail will find a very loving home. I know that. But let's talk about Luna for a second. Let's talk about Luna. Let's talk about Luna because Luna was one of our very first dogs that we pulled from Wichita Animal Shelter in 2018. It was a day that a volunteer took a minivan to a shelter. And beware, if you send a volunteer to a minivan in a kill shelter, you know you're going to leave with more than one dog. So I got the phone call that she went there to pick up one senior. She's like, Jen, they're going to kill six dogs today. I'm going to take them all. It wasn't an ask, just so you know, it was I'm going to take them all. And we had just opened our doors then. Um, So she took all six dogs, didn't have a sink kennel. None of those dogs knew each other. And she drove the three hours back. Luna was one of them that day. And Luna has, Luna has bounced from, I think, four different homes. And she's in our care right now. She is the most loving dog. She has allergies. She does sometimes resource guard with other dogs in a home. And the last adopter, I think, got pregnant and dumped her back. And, you know, Luna Luna just wants someone to believe that even with her quirks, her life has value too. And she's so deeply loved here. And all she wants to do is cuddle and lay in your lap and just be held. So if you want, I think she's about, she's about eight years old now. She just literally wants to be in your arms, snuggled. And if you are a one-person pet, Luna is your girl now the last thing i did forget about this her last adopter that had her for literally i think 24 hours luna has an absolute nervous breakdown at the vet she has some type of traumatic experience and what happened the adopter brought her to the vet she saw firsthand even though we disclosed all this it scared her which is okay there's no judgment on that it's one thing to say a dog reacts this way it's another thing to see it so luna has extreme fear of vets and so that's that's why she hasn't been adopted and so we're we have faith someone out there is going to love luna as much as we do because she has so much love to give Oh my gosh, we should do a whole episode on only pets because people judge them and they think that 
it's, you know, scary and they're not. It's so, it almost gives you an excuse to, if you're an introvert and you don't want to go out and you love being at home, holy heck, <laughs> spend the night with your dog every night because they just want, you're their hero, however long you spend with them. So, but Luna does get a well, well with other dogs. Copper's one of her friends too, so. Honestly, we should do that as one of the episodes of, I was yeah. just going to say misunderstood dogs, but then I looked and Kingston decided to pull one of his bulls into the cage. He's been pulling things into his cage, you know, like into his home. <laughs> Anyways, of misrepresented dogs yeah. and just kind of like with five things, almost like a dating profile of the dogs of like, like five that. things you need to know about them. They're red flags that might be beige. <laughs> Let's get let's get Michaela and Peyton and, and others on that will come and yes. come talk about. Maybe we can get one from each barn and they can talk about their singles and promote them. That would be really yes. cool. It'd be a I dating be show. Let's let's make a match. That's a good idea. That okay. We'll get like that as the episode. Anything else from either of you? This was a good catch up episode. I always love these ones. No, it was good. I wish we had catch up episodes with like, hey, we got a ten million dollar donation. <laughs> the the KCMO properties hey. going forward. We got no worries, you know. But well, I that's honestly. That. Let's reflect on that because it was on the podcast when we were like, we just need a donor for. It was. It was. So okay, and spoke it's it into existence. There. It's in then, the next episode. We'll say it. It happened. So you're exactly right. We actually had an update of getting a donor for it and purchased it. So God, God plants seeds. We're planting the seed. It's amazing. I, I say that all the time. It's, it's so weird how like little things pop in my head. I'm like, oh, wait, somebody said that six months ago and something so unrelated. And then it, it's stuck. And I'm like, wow, that's so applicable. And then it's just, yes. it's just. It's beautiful. I think life is beautiful, even through the hard um, tragedies and the lessons there. There's beauty in everything, um, but animals help me remember that. And so do the really good people. So I, it took a long time to be able to say that. And you guys are also two of the reasons I can say that because you guys were here when I didn't talk to anyone. People don't understand in 2017, when I joined the football team and 2018, when I opened, I literally did not talk to anyone in 2016. I didn't say a word to anyone. Um, after Sam died. So it's when I say I've been in darkness, um, that doesn't do it justice. And you guys were, you guys were a light and Lily and Bailey snuck their way in. They did their job. They, they brought you <laughs> two into my life. And I, I, you got hooked. I won't let you go. So no, you won't. And I appreciate it. It always goes both ways. Yeah. So Sai, you know what to do. Wrap us up. As always, it's never too late for a happily ever after. 